Thank you so much, sir. So what were the factors that contributed to the early knockout of the Super Eagles in the last World Cup, sir? I think, the number one, I have to thank uh, the footballers, uh, NFF uh, lead uh, uh, team of Amaju and the Football Federation. This is the first time in our history that the national team did not fall into any hands that has to deal with when it comes to the financial area of the team. The boys who have been paid their bonuses, they have been paid their entitlements. This is their profession. This is what they do. They are entitled to receive what they work for. That is one. So credit should go to him. Number two, credit should go to the coaches, especially Ganat Rural. He doesn't have a team, but he has been able to manage whatever he has been able to assemble and pick them, train them, develop them to face our opponent. And in the process of that, they were able to qualify to the World Cup. I didn't give them a chance or a space. But they did. Wow. Secondly, when they went to the World Cup, I wasn't expecting miracle or any a extraordinary performance. I think the quality they have in the team, they get to that stage and they were able to get to the best performance. So credit should go to the national team coaches and also to the NFF-led uh, team of Amaju. I think that is the best they can go because the they, they weight and the strength they have behind that team can't go more than that first team. That's how I see it. I don't know about other people's opinion, but that's how I see it. If I can understudy practically uh, the weight and the strength and the ability of that team, they can't. They don't have the strength to go more than that. So that is the best they can give. So I pray that the next World Cup will have a better team than this one that can go more further. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Back to the Nigeria Football League at the grassroots level. What is your holistic take on it? Do you think the government is doing enough to develop the league? Do we really have government that like uh, love sports? Or do we really have government that want to give life to the area of sports or football? We don't have it. But we have uh, government or we have uh, people who are in a strategic position that can give to their girlfriends millions and billions. And at the end of the day, impoverish the young men of this nation. And let me tell you one accident. I, there was a year uh, I, the Super Eagles came to play a friendly in Australia. I was in Italy, so, and uh, from, no, they came to Austria, not Australia, Austria. It was just three hours away from my city, Milan. They were playing in, uh, what they call it, what is it, their capital? In Austria capital, I'm forgetting it. Vienna, God bless you, Vienna. It was just three hours away from my city, just like driving from Lagos to Benin. So I say, okay, I call some of my young boys. We hit the road. We got to the place. I saw then uh, uh, the chairman was Marguerite. Then okay. uh, it's Marguerite Tenno. I saw some of other Nigerians that came to you know witness the match. I went there with the coaches. Tribal was happy to see me, and Amokachi was then his assistant. I went there and you know fraternized with them and. Getting to the time to the stadium, I said they should give me a ticket. Oh, the chairman sent me to this individual. This individual sent me to this other individual. This other individual with uh, then uh, uh, Taiwo Bunjobi was the secretary. Only for me to find out that there was no ticket. But in that very game, I saw them with their girlfriends. We're up to 30 girlfriends. The tickets. Yes. And they gave every one of these young girls tickets. Yes. I sacrificed my life for this nation, for this country. And at the end of the day, I came to just give a support to the team. I didn't have a ticket. And I was going back, no even anything. And those young girls went back home. With, I don't know how many, how many Esther codes of dollars that was extended to them. So it's the same application. Even right now in every area of the leadership. These young men that are in different sectors of leadership have no money for young and upcoming sports athletes of this nation that will not only bring pride, that will change the color, that will not only change color. Through these areas of life, they can deviate a lot of violence, 
crime, uh, crime, nuisance kind of character that will bring stability to this nation. And nobody is giving them life. They don't have the money, they will give to their girlfriends and waste all kind of madness. So time is coming that if they are not held accountable, time is coming to be held accountable over there. So that is my word for them. Thank you so much, sir. Can you kindly explain to us your relationship with your long-time friend who is an ex-international footballer, a football coach and agent, Ese Odoko? Oh, Ese is, uh, is one of the gifts to this nation. And uh, if we can find young men in different sectors of life, they can have a setting, uh, they can have the kind of vision he has. It's not only as a gift, not only as a talent. And when he was playing, he was able to represent this country in different uh, nations, in Asia, in Europe, oh. and other parts of the world. Right. And we, if we can have young men in different sectors of this nation, in different areas, okay. we will see not a day different Nigeria. We will not only see a Nigerian that has a future, but Nigeria will be a better place for the nation to to come and uh, and exist. So it's a gift not only to the use of this country. It's not only a gift to the use of this country, it's a gift to Africa. It's not only a gift to Africa, it's a gift to every one of us that are inside uh, this team that he has been building for years. So my prayer for him is that God give him much strength, much life, fortitude, give him more vigor and insight and whatever is needed as a resources and material that he needs to enhance and advance forward in heaven with this. Uh, he's a great man and uh, I celebrate him. Thank you, Shabbat Thank, Thank you. Mr. Ese Oduko looks at you as a mentor and a role model. Do you think young Nigerians do the same instead of European players? Uh, because because uh, Ese is a young man that Love found his heart early in life. When I mean love, the love of Christ. And uh, he's a young man that was able to discover his direction and his purpose in life. And he was able to uh, look up to somebody and submit that gift him. So today I'm not surprised that whatever is happening to him. And it's a light to younger, other generation of yes. men, and even people that are coming into his umbrella. That they should see him. That this is a man that understood somebody. And even if you read the Bible, the Bible says something about. They say until you build another that man's own gift, cannot be able to build your own. So he's somebody that took that trend, and he was able to build from it. And I see that God is going to expand it, expand his capacity beyond his limit. But he's just starting, his best is still here to come because he has laid down a good foundation. And I pray that young men should look up to him and emulate him and walk through that ladder. And they will come back, they will come to any pinnacle that they want to achieve or reach in life as a potential. Thank you, sir. Last one. What do you think about the plans of S.A. Odoko consigning the future Super Eagles? Do you think Nigerians can win the Senior World Cup? When he was saying, I say I, I don't want to say anything. I said, this boy is crazy. He's just talking my vision. Because I have sat down with people and uh, rub ideas or brainstorm as you will say. And you see that the people have been threatened because they know they don't have it. And of a sudden, before you know, they disconnect from you. And they don't have it. So, he's bringing this vision and building on it. It's awesome and wonderful. And uh, we're going to work together. That if, they, if Nigeria cannot give us a place, God has given us a brain. And we'll work it. And we'll work it and through this academy i don't know of this first badge i don't know much of this first badge but i'm sure the future where i'm going to be well involved 
what is in me I will put to those young future. I don't know if this first bag because I don't see much. But I pray that when they go, they'll be able to make it. That's my prayer. But the next one is something I'm going to be much, much involved. We're going to put our heart in them. Our spirit in them. There is one thing to train a person. There is another thing to put your spirit in that person. Sure. Yes. When Moses was having a problem in the, in the Old Testament, the Lord said, Look, there is something in you. Call the Joshua's, the Caleb's, and the rest. Transfer what is in you into them. Let them go and manifest it. And it happened. So my next one, the next one is coming with, I'll be really, really involved. Then we'll put that thing in them. And we'll, in the future, we'll see the Okochas. We'll see the Akinians. We'll see the Amonikes that will bring back the pride and happiness in the area of football that we used to celebrate uh, in this nation. So I, I, I want to say kudos to Ese. Uh, I pray God will continue to lift his work, his hand, and his family, strengthen them. And uh, uh, in the, 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 I don't know how they say it in Nigeria on Africa, uh, in the English language, say the, the sky is, is uh, no, yes, it will go beyond that. And uh, God will open massive door. It's just coming. The more I look at him, the more I have, the more I look at him and the future, the more I have hope. The more I have strength, the more I could see what even I can mention. So uh, he's going to make it and uh, he has no limit. And God will, God will put the right people at the right place for him to expand not only his company or whatever God has put in him to project. Sir, thank That's you for your time. Thank nice you. having a great time with you, sir. Thank God you bless you. And with him, right in there, is his longtime friend and sport partner, who is also an ex footballer, now the CEO of French Talent Football Development, FTFD. In the Kingdom and Nigeria, his name is Ese Odoku, a passionate football coach, manager, agent who has the interest at heart to discover and develop the young Africa talent in Nigeria. My name is Joy Onuba. Come with me, let's have an interview with them. Good afternoon, Mr. Ese Odoku. Good afternoon. Pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you so much. Can you explain to us your journey to the international football as a player? Wow, um, that's a good question. I grew up uh, from a very um, less privileged background. And, okay. um, I think I can associate that with uh, uh, most young Nigerian players. And I have to fight my way um, through. I didn't play in the Nigerian league, and so I didn't have much experience in the Nigerian league. Um, I live in Nigeria was actually a decision that I have to take mm -hmm. and because I couldn't go to school but there's no money and I couldn't fit in into the Nigerian league because I was not you know tough or strong enough or mature enough so wow. um, within those times I have to leave Nigeria I left Nigeria without a passport and it was actually a you know a tough time for me to decide and leave Nigeria and going to Nigeria, I'll find myself in Senegal, uh, where I play for Jandak of Senegal. And from there, I'll qualify for the uh, African Nations Cup, where uh, we met Raja Casablanca. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in 1998, and they were the defending champions then. And when I arrived in uh, Jandak, they haven't won the league for 14 years. So when I arrived, we won the league that year that I, that I came. And within that year, as well, I won the young best uh, uh, player in the league, okay. and I won the highest, you understand, uh, goal scorer in the league as a midfield player. And so that is how Stad Rennes scouted me uh, mm. for France, and that is how I went to France uh, to play. Uh, and I was in France; uh, they wanted to sign me okay. in, in Stad Rennes. So I was with the academy for a while, played with their large youth, uh, we were together in rain. And from there, they, they, my club, which is Jandak, now requested for some money, okay. and like transfer. Uh, but then I was young, I don't know what you know, transfer is, what the business of football is actually. I just wanted to play in Europe. So they said the money was uh, too much, and I have to go back to Senegal, to Jandak, uh, because they can't sign me uh, on that. And so. It was a uh, 19 
99 was actually three days to Christmas. Mm. I have to go back, you know, went back to, uh, to Senegal. But I so much believed I was still going to come back to Europe. So I was so confident because there are some young players that go and they run away. They cannot sign professional contracts. You know, they run away. And I came back, joined, you know, with Jandak again until uh, Enavan, the gun camp in France, invited me again in six months, after six months. And I went, as I went to France. From France, I played a little bit in Enavan, the gun camp then. And uh, it was that period, 2000. Uh, I now moved uh, to Italy. And my journey to Italy was uh, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, long, a long story, which I'm not going to uh, go into. But that's how when I got to Italy, and that is how I met uh, the legendary uh, defender, uh, world renowned, uh, Taribo West, and then we just moved from Inter Milan to AC Milan. So the way the way I actually met him is that I got to uh, to Italy. Everyone said, Ah, uh, Taribo West, you should go and uh, try and see him because he's you know he has it, this free heart, you understand, to reach out to people. And since you're a young player, you'll be able to, you understand, reach out to you and give you good advice. Okay, sir. What were your challenges during the journey? My challenges was a unique one, I would say, because I didn't have anybody to guide me. I didn't have anybody to direct me. And so I did everything on my own. And so moving from Nigeria to you know, Senegal, to France, to Italy, whereas got to club to play and I didn't have you know people that would say this is how it is done but this is how it is done until I actually met uh, the legendary Taribo West okay. who actually took me to uh, the AC Milan and uh, lawyer uh, then to try to you know process my document to stay in Italy so it was a strong challenge. Well, that's yeah. um, what inspired you into football playing? Football was the only thing that I can do um, because there was no job, I was very young. There was no family um, here in Nigeria. And so I look around and see that I can't go to school and the only thing I can do is only to play football. So I have to pursue that. And so that's what actually inspired me uh, in playing football. Can you tell us some of the international clubs you have played in and your relationship with them, sir? Right, I've played for Enna Van de Gongam in France. Start Rennes in France, Prato in Italy, Florence. I've played for AC Caserana in Malta, Kimban Athletic in Wales, Yedin FC in England, okay. and a uh, few other non league clubs in England. Wow. So I've, I've, built, I've built this uh, relationship with a few of the clubs okay. um, as well, because I have friends that we've played with, and even up to today. And the ones I haven't retired were still in, co in, in contact. Some have become coaches in the same club. And, uh, and this now has helped me in terms of becoming an agent now. And I see that those contacts and those relationships I have with them and the clubs will now help me even you know, with younger players I'll come in contact with. So have a good relationship with them. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks so much. What made you resign as early as an international player? I would say. Main main reason is uh, because of ministry. I think I was uh, so much involved in ministry, so I was struggling playing football, and at the same time I was serving so much um, in church. And I have to decide, so I always have problem every time I go to play because I'll be in church. So if we're having a prayer match meeting, and probably if we're playing on a Sunday, I have to be in church rather than being in the meeting. So I have problems, and so. When I decided to just want to go to Bible school, I just make the decision to stop uh, professional, to pursue professional football. Were yeah, you not seeing the idea of becoming a football agent and a coach even before kick-starting your football career, sir? Not really. I did not actually put in mind to be a coach. Uh, but when I was playing, and sometimes when I go to training, the younger ones, probably like the under 10s, uh, on the, the under 14s, might be training, so I, for me, I'm a disciplined player, so I get to train very sometimes one hour before, mm -hmm. and so I see this player sometimes I just join the coaches to, you know, help coach the, the, the players, and so from there I saw that I have, you know, a passion to just coach as well okay. because I love players developing. So when I stop football, I now go into coaching. So I did not plan it beforehand, and so it's when I stopped, I said, 
know what, while I'm in the ministry, let me just take my coaching badges. That is how I took my coaching badges. Oh. And while coaching for a period of time, I've got a football academy right now when I was coaching. Then I see that when I was doing scouting, the clubs, they benefit more. Go when I scout players for them, the players move on. And I cannot, you know, get much, you know, from them. So I decided to now take a, uh, my license and be an agent. So with that, I'll be able to scout the players, be able to mentor them, put them in clubs, okay, okay and, and benefit a little bit more. From Thank you so much, sir. Okay. What really inspired your scouting for fresh talent around Africa, especially Nigeria, sir? Right. Um, I've got fresh talent was uh, established in in UK, okay, uh, because I was scouting for clubs and I was coaching, and so okay. <clears throat> I feel I need to set up uh, the academy in the UK and to reach out to the local, uh, local players and mentor them and direct them to clubs. And so, the, the idea of coming to Nigeria was actually being ordered by the Lord, I, I would say, because I'm coming a little bit spiritual now. Uh, I was, you know, prompted to come to Nigeria because the younger players and the grassroots of Nigeria is nowhere structured. And, and the Lord want people like me and others that have the passion for young players to be directed and be, you know, mentored and, you know, point them in the right path for them to succeed. So that is what gives me that, you know, motivation and passion to come to Nigeria, set up the academy, start to scout, and not only for them to just go and play, but for, for me to mentor them and direct them character-wise attitude and how we can develop them and position them back into the national team. Okay, sir. What holders did you encounter of that process? Oh, <laughs> Nigeria, I don't know how I'm going to uh, put it. I believe most of Every Nigerians know that it's challenging when you come to Nigeria. Most people coming from abroad, from Europe with an idea and you come to share that in Nigeria. Most people think, you know, it's just a joke. Or some want to do what you want to do and because they don't have, you know, that to do it, they want to discourage you. And so it's a challenge I have to push through. And so I've been doing it for a couple of years, you understand, now, but now, because of uh, few people, and I would say probably one very, very, you know, uh, supporting friend, which is in the legendary Terrible West, that keeps, you know, encouraging me, and now we're having a breakthrough uh, in, in reaching out, so we keep going and doing that. Thank you, sir. Thank you.